everyone, Jim, Smoky Lake Maple Products. Just want to show you uh, another innovation that we have been working on, actually for uh, most of a year now, but it is finally perfected. And it's a very universal gas nozzle for LP gas, propane, and uh, also natural gas. I'm not going to show too much of the details on the inside of the nozzle, but it is an air-cooled burner that we're going to use in all kinds of boilers and evaporators, finishers and things like that. Um, it is about 50,000 BTUs per nozzle, so a, a whole lot of heat. It, it's, a, it's a substantial amount of heat. Um, what we're coming up with for the primary purpose of this, of this technology is a small finishing evaporator or for a, for a hobbyist, a, a very productive primary evaporator, I guess. But uh, a common application of this type of system is gonna be for the midsize or bigger producer that is using some kind of a, a propane or LP uh, natural gas fuel source to bring your syrup back up the temperature before the filter press for bottling. Um, a lot of people will also actually finish evaporate, meaning they, they take their syrup off their primary evaporator under density and then boil it um, to proper density. I can get into why I don't like doing that. I draw syrup off, uh, off the evaporator perfectly done or slightly over dense. I don't like to reboil, but that's a very common practice to use a, 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 a secondary evaporator to final tune it, uh, the density of the syrup. Um, traditional gas-fired finisher will be the type of burner system that uses the big hones air mixers and then a series of drilled uh, tubes so it shoots up little tiny inefficient orange flames that cover the bottom of your pan with carbon. That's the disadvantage of those old systems. They're very inefficient they're slow, there's not a lot of heat there, and it, it creates all kinds of carbon buildup on the bottom of your pans. So I knew we could do better than that when we had demands from, from producers that needed a gas-fired finisher or a reheater system. I knew I wasn't going to do what everyone else has been doing for years. We never do that. All of, our, all of our products that we build are better in some way or another, otherwise we just wouldn't do it. Um, This is the smallest uh, of, the, of the units that we're probably going to build. This happens to be a 16 inch by 30 inch pan on here. So again, for a small hobby producer, fantastic way of, of evaporating. Or for the smaller or mid-size commercial producer, great way of warming your syrup up. Um, we brought just regular well water, it was about 45 degrees coming out of the tap. I brought that about eight gallons of 45 degree water to a boil, an all out boil, in about six and a half minutes. So you can see now it's been sitting and our temperature has dropped to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. But I'm gonna fire up the, the burners just to show you how effective they are. And you're gonna see on this particular unit, I have it adjustable so I could actually do some final testing on the smaller unit. We've done extensive testing on, the, on a bigger one, a two foot by four foot, and nailed it, it's perfect. It got shipped out, it's no longer in our showroom. Um, but I did do some testing on a smaller unit like this, so I made it so that I could adjust the attack angle of the burners, okay, and also the, the insert depth of the burners. And so the, the production units probably won't have nearly as much adjustability, but for me it was important on this, on, on this first smaller unit just to make sure that I could make it perfect in the, in the future. So uh, the beauty of it is even when you do run a small flame in here, let's just say you get your syrup up to temperature, you're using this as a finisher, and you get it up to 190 degrees, maybe that's all the higher you want to go, you can throttle the flame back. Um, there's no other torch burner like this available in the market. Um, surprisingly, I would think there would be a lot of application for this, but we had to, we had to kind of develop it and, and invent it ourselves. The like a blowtorch, anyone that's used a blowtorch extensively for soldering or whatever, if you run a, sm a low flame inside your torch, you'll actually um, heat up your, 
your nozzle on the torch because that flame is inside the tube and it will, it'll actually uh, start to wreck the internal uh, mixers inside the, the nozzle. We actually have an air cooler on here. So you'll see, when I ran a low flame, the nozzle would get very hot, which is what you would expect, but the air cooler kept your, your main mixer from getting hot at all. It, it, and I'll, I'll show you after we run a flame on it that you can this part right here. Keep in mind, flame, any nozzle should be designed so that the flame is completely outside of it. It should never really get very hot. So I'm just going to start this up now. So we have a pretty low flame there. The reason I shot most of this video with because I get pretty low, I run full flame. It's going to be a little bit too loud. So I'm going to crank it up and I will actually slide this out just to show you how, how much energy is being created with this. I'm going to pull the, I'm going to pull just so we can actually see the, the flames. We could talk. The flames is long, which I actually showed in a, a different video a, a while back, a very short video when I first got some of our production nozzles complete. So now we've been um, a little bit low flame. Right here is a very low flame. Right now, a lot flame is inside this nozzle and you can see there's discoloration occurring here on the on the tips which I I can't even touch right now um, not for any period of time but I can still I can still sir so the internal tube is it is properly cooling it down just so I can talk more but maybe it was at 160 when we first uh, showed the right now we don't have as you can see we have a cupola right but in Wisconsin we don't have it all escaping this unit that's why we have a lid on it for now but I'm in that short period of time even though we at full fire What we've done with this, what we've mastered, 
is an even board across the pan. The sound, we have a heat source on one end, we have on the other end, pulling the pulling across. Now, manage this. You have a chimney connection. Whether you want to connect it to a chimney uh, and get fumes out of your building, that's that you. But it, it is the so. But the chimney is two feet. That's kind of an old of what's coming here. These units are going to be mass produced here uh, once we introduce them to the market. Um, everything about it is better than what we've seen before with tube style burners. Everything about it the, the fuel efficiency, the cleanliness, um, our ability to hook up a, a chimney to it, uh, our control. It's all, it's all, all coming in at a lower cost. Those tube burners with the, with the big, huge green mixers on each tube. Very, very expensive. Very expensive to build, expensive to buy. Um, when we run these off the lathe, we can build them pretty darn efficiently. The internals are not very complicated. So we're going to come in at a, at a price significantly lower than what you've been seeing from our competitors on those old tube burner systems. So uh, that's just what we've been doing. Um, among other things here, this is another big innovation that we're really, really excited about. That's it.